Hello, everyone. Today, I'd like to talk about the cost-benefit analysis and to share uh, with you an example that I have developed to, uh, in particular, to illustrate the four different stages of the cost-benefit analysis. So just to summarize the main idea, the cost-benefit analysis is a method that is used mostly by government to assess uh, whether or not uh, large-scale projects uh, should be implemented or not. Uh, and there are four main stages that uh, have to be uh, undertaken in order to carry out a cost-benefit analysis and to assess uh, or to measure whether or not a project is desirable. The first thing that we should do is to identify all relevant costs and benefits over the whole project lifetime, so that's stage one. Stage two, once we have this long list of all costs and all benefits, we have to give a monetary value to each item. Then once we have that, we can forecast future costs and benefits, which means that for each year, we have to quantify to uh, estimate uh, how much of each cost and how much of each benefit we are going to uh, face or to receive. And finally, once you have all this data, we just have to compile it to put everything together uh, and to make a final decision. And sometimes, um, it took honestly, it took me some time to actually understand how these different stages were articulated. Uh, so the best way to understand it is to take an example. And I created this example, uh, but you can um, come up with, um, with a different one with your students. I came up with this example where we have to build or to open our own school and we have to run a cost-benefit analysis in order to determine whether or not this project uh, is, well, is a good idea or not from an economic perspective, okay? And it's, it's a good example to illustrate the four different stages of the cost-benefit analysis. So remember, stage one is to identify all costs and all benefits which means private cost and private benefits, but also external cost and external benefits. All right, so if we uh, want to open a new school, let's start with the private cost. Of course, we would have to, uh, well, uh, to pay the, the staff, the teachers. This is a private cost. We would have to pay the electricity bill. This is a, a private cost. And there might also be some external costs. There might be some noise, especially if it's a kindergarten where you have the, ch the, the, the kids <laughs> screaming uh, very loud. So some neighbors might be upset. You know, this is these are just some examples. It doesn't really matter if they don't really make sense, if they don't uh, accurately represent the cost-benefit analysis of the school, but it's just an example to help your students to understand how this works. So this would be an example of an external cost. There might be some traffic jams uh, in the morning when the parents, they come to drop their kids at school and the, in the evening when they uh, come to pick them up. Uh, so this would be an example of an external cost. A private benefit, of course, if we build our school, we will be able to uh, receive money. This is the main benefit uh, as a business. Uh, so the tuition fees would be the private benefit from the perspective uh, of the, the owner of the school. Uh, the school might also receive some government subsidies. That we could see that as a private benefit. If you re if you open a school, you get some support by the government. You get some money. This can be seen as a private benefit. And what could be the external benefit? I took two examples. The first one would be a lower crime rate, simply because we know that there tend to be a relationship between the level of education uh, and the, the crime rate. The higher the level of education, the lower the crime rate. Okay, um, so that would be one external benefit if we open um, a school. And another external benefit is that when people have a higher level of education, they might have a greater level of environmental uh, awareness uh, and they might have some behaviors that will better protect the environment. So this could be seen as an external benefit associated with the opening uh, of our own school. All right, so that's stage one. You see, I tried to take two examples of each. I think it's uh, you have the two types of cost, two types of benefits. And now that's stage two. We have to give a monetary value to each of them, and in particular to each unit 
of each of these item okay so of course there will be different units depending on what item we have all right so monetary value so for example for uh, here the unit is going to be per teacher per year we have a certain amount that we have to pay uh, for electricity it could be for the, the amount per megawatt uh, per noise, this could be per, uh, <laughs> this is the unit that measures noise, uh, $1 per extra uh, decibel, I think we call that uh, in English, extra decibel. And you see that uh, the, these two um, private costs, it's actually quite easy to give a monetary value because there is a market for teachers, there is a market for electricity, so there is a market price for both these items. On the other hand, what is the price of noise? Uh, if we had to give a monetary value to uh, the external cost associated with noise, it's quite difficult because there is no market where we can trade noise. Uh, so instead, we use what we call shadow prices. A shadow price is simply an estimate uh, of a cost or a benefit uh, of something that cannot be traded in a market. So the, the typical example is the price of a human life. When you build a hospital, the be one of the main benefits is that you save lives. But what is the price of a human life? We, we give a shadow price, uh, just like the price of noise. Uh, when you build a new uh, highway, one of the main benefits is that you can save time. But what is the price of time? Same thing. We give a shadow price, an estimation of something that is not traded in any market. All right. Uh, you see, um, this, this is exactly what I do to estimate the cost of traffic jams. I give a monetary value, $20, for each hour lost in traffic. All right, this is, again, just an example. You can create your own example with your students. That's the one that I use. Then tuition fees. All right, this is uh, simply uh, quite easy to estimate because, well, uh, you, you know that if you build your school, this is, uh, there is a market for education or for international education. So you know how much money you can make uh, for each student that uh, joins your school. And government subsidies, same thing. Uh, you, this might not be extremely precise, but you might have a good idea of what type of subsidy uh, you can receive from the government if you open your own school. All right, and uh, external benefits, same thing. These are two shadow prices, especially the first one. Uh, it's difficult to estimate the benefit or to give a monetary value to uh, having less or fewer crimes. So again, I just took an example out of nowhere just to illustrate my point, $2,000. Uh, per crime prevented. <laughs> okay, no, it doesn't have to make sense, it's just an illustration. Uh, uh, so this is of course a shadow price. Actually for CO2, for environmental awareness, $1,000 uh, per ton of CO2 saved. There is a market for CO2, you know that some businesses they uh, trade um, environmental standards or they trade pollution permits, emissions permit. So this would not be a shadow price simply because there is indeed a market for, uh, for CO2. Okay, but the bottom line is that after we have made this long list of all costs and benefits, we uh, give a monetary value to each unit of each of these costs and benefits. That is stage two. Stage three, we forecast future costs and benefits. So to simplify, I have only considered that our school is going to remain open for uh, two years. All right, so two years. So we have year one. We will have the cost and benefit in year one and the cost and benefit in year two, okay? So here what I do is that I forecast how many teachers I will have to pay in year one, how many megawatts of, uh, of electricity I will have to pay uh, in year one, uh, how many students I will, um, will, will have signed up to my school, how many government subsidies I will have received, and so on and so on. How many crimes I will be able to prevent. And once have, I have that, then it becomes straightforward to calculate the total co private cost in year one, the total external cost in year one, 
the total uh, private benefit in year one and the total external benefit in year one simply by multiplying. So, for example, for teachers, I multiply 50 teachers by the cost of one teacher and I get $1.75 million. Uh, for tuition fees, uh, I, I anticipate that I will have 120 students. I just have to multiply by uh, the price or the cost of one tuition fee and I get $1.44 million, which is the benefit that I will receive in year one from the tuition fees okay and i do that for all cost and all benefits in year one and for all cost and all benefits in year two so these are forecasts of course all right and that's stage three now compile the data interpret and decide which okay let's have a quick look at that so what we can do is uh, to calculate the net private benefit so first what i do is that i only care about private cost and private benefit uh, to match the type of decision that would have been made by a private company. Remember that a private company only cares about private cost and private benefit. So this is what I do here, net private benefit, which is simply the private benefit minus the private cost, okay? And I see that in year one, it's negative, minus $78,000. In year two, it's positive, $50,000. Uh, and here you see that it's undiscounted which means that uh, this is the net private benefit uh, in year one, and this is net private benefit in year two, but I haven't yet discounted this future amount. Remember that the process of discounting is useful because when you have amounts, cost or benefits that uh, arise at different points in time, you cannot compare them. It's like if I add you to add uh, three apples and two oranges, you can't give me an answer simply because uh, you can't add things that are different. And this is exactly this, the, th the same thing with amounts of money that arise at different points in time. You cannot uh, do an operation between dollars that will be earned or paid in year one and dollars that will be earned or paid in year two. So that's why we need to discount year two amounts in order to transform them into year one dollars. And then once we have the same unit, we can compare them. Uh, this is exactly the same idea if I ask you what is one kilogram plus 500 grams. Some of you will tell me it's 1.5 kilogram and, and others will tell me it's 1,500 grams. Uh, you see that you have a problem because you need to add two things with different units and the solution is to convert uh, one uh, kilogram into 1,000 grams or uh, 500 grams into 0 0.5 kilograms. And once you have your two uh, amounts that have the same unit, then you can add them. So this is exactly the same thing here. So these are the amounts undiscounted. And then if I want to compare them to compute the net present value of this project, I need to convert year two amounts into year one amount. Okay, so here I introduce a 10% discount rate and I have uh, the net private benefit that I expect to receive in year two measured uh, or converted into year one dollars, okay? And it, this allows me to calculate the net present value. Here means that I only uh, take into account the private cost and private benefit. Okay, so this is simply uh, I add these two amounts: uh, the minus seventy-eight thousand dollars plus fifty thousand dollars. It's I have a negative net present value. So the con the conclusion uh, from the point of view of a private company is that we should not open a school okay? because it's not profitable. We see that uh, the net present value is negative, so uh, we would actually lose money if we decided to open this school. Now, what, that, what we are going to do is to uh, ask the same question, should we open the school, but now from the point of view of the government, uh, and the difference is that instead of focusing on the private cost and the private benefit, we are going to take into account all cost and all benefits, so the social cost and the social benefit, and we'll see that, that the the answer is going to be very much different. So now, instead of calculating the net private benefit, I calculate the net social benefit. So first row here is undiscounted. Okay, so the net social benefit in year one is minus $53,000. 
the net social benefit in year two is one hundred twenty seven thousand dollars. OK, it's undiscounted. I cannot compare. I cannot subtract these two amounts because they are amounts of money that arise at different points in time. They, are, they have different units. So I need to convert them into the same unit. So let's convert year two dollars into year one dollars through this process of discounting. Uh, OK, and you see something interesting is that here, instead of choosing a 10 percent discount rate, I choose a 5 percent discount rate to recognize the fact that usually private companies, they tend to discount the future too heavily, which means that the discount rate that is chosen by private individuals or private businesses tend to be higher than what would be socially optimal. So this is why I chose two di different discount rate. Basically, it means that private uh, agents, businesses or individuals, they do not sufficiently care about the future. They often suffer from economic myopia where they overly focus on short term costs and benefits and not enough on long term costs and benefits. OK, but the government does not suffer from this bias, does not suffer from economic myopia. So it does not discount the future as heavily as private uh, agents. All right. So I have you see that, of course, um, year one dollars, I do not need to convert them. So this doesn't change. But year two dollars, I had one hundred twenty seven dollars, uh, hundred thousand dollars when I convert them into year Year one dollars using a five percent discount rate, it becomes one hundred twenty thousand dollars. Okay, so now I can compute the net present value. The S here means for social benefit. Okay, I do not only focus on private cost and benefits, but I include all types of cost and benefit. And I see that the net present value is positive, which suggests that the socially optimal decision is to open the school. Opening the school would increase social welfare. But this decision goes against what a private company would do simply because it fails to recognize or to acknowledge the existence of external cost and external benefits. Right. I think it's um, I like this example. Um, I think it's a good way to summarize the cost benefit analysis. Uh, it summarizes many different things, the different types of cost, private, external, uh, social cost. It also uh, includes the, the issue of discounting, what a government would do, a social cost and social benefit versus what a private business would do, private cost and benefit. It really uh, identifies and helps to uh, understand what the four main stages are. And what I usually do is that I introduce this example first and then I ask my students to come up with another example to give them another project like uh, building a bridge, building a hospital, building a, building a railway, uh, building a stadium, uh, any, any type of project. And you ask them to replicate the same type of matrix uh, just for them to think of what the cost and benefits could be and to play around with these different concepts and numbers to practice the, the process of discounting and so on. All right, I hope you enjoyed this example. Uh, and yeah, that's it for today. Thanks everyone, have a good day. Talk to you soon, bye-bye.